I really was looking for a small academic community and I live right across the harbor and I always wanted to be involved in the water but never really had an opportunity when I was younger. So when I heard about the sound school, I was like, oh my gosh, this is absolutely perfect. I've always been interested in marine conservation and kind of learning more about my community. And I think this is the perfect place to come to learn about all that. So this is a school of choice and we're different from a magnet school. We're not a magnet school, which everybody gets confused. We are one of 19 agri-science and technology education centers. So we are part of a state program, as well as being a New Haven Public School. And we are of those state ASTE centers. Um, we are the only one that is also a comprehensive high school. So every student who attends the Sound School Aquaculture or Agriculture Center also is here for a full day. So we have 100% enrollment in the Ag or Aqua program. And students come here because they want to come here. And in fact, that was a, is a requirement according to state statute of coming into the school, is you have to sit down in an interview and sh prove that you have an interest in our program. And, uh, and proving away that's not the parent. Yeah, it has to be, you know, the, 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 interview, the interviewer has to be satisfied that it's really coming from the student. The, you know, they're already coming here because they want to be here. They're interested in what we do. We have among the highest attendance rate in the district. We actually, I think we probably have the highest attendance rate in the district, certainly of the high schools. Um, we average about 96% daily attendance, which is pretty unheard of at the high school level in an urban district. Um, another thing that sets us apart is we have students from 22 cooperating districts, so we have a really large catchment area. Um, so it's a really diverse community in terms of where, we, where our students come from, um, ethnically, religiously, socioeconomically, all of that. Most of them come here knowing very few kids. You know, maybe they have one or two kids from their middle school who came here also. And so one of the things that we do is really try to build community from the very start. Our ninth graders spend their first two days on campus um, as a group doing group building activities. And then a couple weeks later, um, we take them away for three days camping. Um, and up at Deer Lake in Killingworth. Some of our kids have never left their homes overnight. Many of them have never slept outside. So they do a lot of team building and ropes course and all sorts of things so that we really build community. Our students learn not only how to operate and crew a vessel, but also um, lead charters for um, our own research classes and also for our local colleges. So Yale, Southern, and University of New Haven will charter our boat and use our crew so that they can go out and do water sampling. Um, so there are things that our students have access to and do that they would never have that ability to do in, in any other school setting. Um, and it's not just every once in a while, it is the daily practice in their curriculum. Um, you can also see we have some of our competition rowboats here. Um, those are actually all made by Sound School students. And oftentimes we have students out here fishing during lunch um, and before and after school. And we do have a fishing club. So our students learn how to row and how to sail together without an instructor in the boat. They learn how to work together as a team of four kids, whether that's in the Sharpies, you can pull it and you can row it. So it was used for oystering. It's a traditional oystering boat. And so we send kids out on the water in a boat. They get instruction and they have to figure out how to get from point A to point B. So there's so much experiential, authentic, hands-on problem solving and learning that happens here. You know, it's, we don't have to set up a problem solving activity you have to get off the mooring, you gotta get back on the mooring, you have to figure out how to make sure you've got your rowers rowing with each other. Um, so there's a lot to just, in their freshman year, what we teach that's very much about how do we build a community and culture here um, where our students work as teams. And then in the tech, you learn to row and sail. We repair our wooden New Haven Sharpie sailboats, which are native to New Haven for oystering and you create a little household model of a boat. So you're really sharpening your, your workshop skills. You also earn your green hand degree for the FFA and then showing that you have a basic knowledge of how the FFA works. Sophomore year for science, you go into biology. 
Um, we have a small focus on aquatic biology because of our area. And in the tech, we learn to drive motorboats and we get our motorboat license. So it's a very unique niche. And then junior year, you choose one of our concentrations. Well, you choose a concentration in tech and a concentration in science. And then senior year, you'll pursue either the tech or science concentration you chose from junior year. Teaching at Sound School for me has meant, uh, first of all, I'm a sailor, so it's allowed me to not only teach in the classroom, but also teach out on the water. Um, I have used the boats um, as part of my uh, curriculum. I've also uh, been active uh, after school running programs. Uh, in fact, I, I run basically the after school sailing program, which consists of both a sailing team and a recreational uh, program on the New Haven Sharpies uh, schools, uh, boats that were built here. Um, so teaching here uh, is a, uh, a different, uh, it, it's a little more informal. Uh, the students call me by my first name. That's not necessarily true among all the teachers here, but when I first started, all the teachers went by their first name. The principal went by his first name. So it became a, a way that uh, I was comfortable uh, and I find it easier um, to connect with my students on that level. We, uh, teaching here is different uh, because, in some ways, because classes are smaller. Um, one of the uh, interesting outcomes of having, having somewhat limited funding when they first built the buildings is they built the classrooms fairly small. And you literally cannot fit more than about 19 or 20 kids in my classrooms. Uh, the other thing I think that is different here, um, and this is not true in all the disciplines, but certainly true in history, is that we have mixed groupings. Uh, we don't have um, an honors track or an AP track. Uh, so I have students in every class that are uh, run the full gamut of skills. And uh, so you have to be creative in the way uh, you do that. You've got to do some individualized learning. You've got to use students in different ways. Um, you have to come up with ways to challenge your brighter kids while you're not overwhelming uh, your students who are struggling. And I've gotten fairly good at that over the years. And I think um, for the most part, I'm, I'm able to keep those two ends engaged uh, uh, fairly successfully. Um, I think this has also always been a school where teachers have a big voice. It's never been a very intense top-down management style. I think that it was started, uh, George Foote, who founded the school, uh, taught, uh, sort of ran the school that way, and so we've always had a uh, major voice. Um, and uh, part of that, uh, through running the school planning and management team, where we meet to make major policy decisions at the school, teachers are able to speak up and talk and plan, um, and that's always been a factor here. Uh, and I think there's a way to have a close relationship with students at this school where if I had a larger number of students, I, w I wouldn't be able to, to do that. Um, once you get well over 100 students um, per teacher, you can't, th those relationships become very difficult. We have kids coming from 40 different middle schools. They're coming at very varied levels of preparedness. Um, and so we've started something called extended learning time or ELTs. So four times this year for two hour, uh, two one and a half hour blocks in the morning, students choose a workshop based on something that they need to work on. But, and then we have peer tutoring set up so that all of our students are really not um, getting lost in the shuffle, not moving on without being ready. We're going to a proficiency based, mastery based system uh, starting next year. Uh, where um, the way we assess kids is going to change a little bit. Is that Something that some schools in New Haven are already doing. Yeah, yeah. It's a very popular idea the, these days. Right. Um, uh, the idea that you're going to say that here's a standard that every student has to reach and we don't move them forward until they've reached that standard. And uh, they, the, the idea is that time is the variable and learning is the constant. I'm not quite sure that time is, is all that variable as they say, but that's sort of the philosophy behind it. And we've always been a little bit that way um, at school, and I think we could do it easier here. There are some challenges in, in sort of changing the mindset, mostly of teachers, uh, on how they're going to grade. Um, 
because you no longer include the sort of daily kind of um, the daily work in your grade. It's really the that the grade is the the, the assessments, right. and are they reaching the standard? Um, last year we began doing a freshman project, so um, it's a portfolio project, and all of our students had um, had to gather work and reflect on their learning at, over the course of a year, and at the end they need to present their growth as a student to their peers. And then we're, there's a sophomore project this year, and the freshmen are going to do that. And part of the reason we do that is because all of our seniors do a capstone project. And one of the things that we found with our seniors with the capstone, there were two big issues. One is, even at our school, by the time they became seniors, our students really didn't know how to do a self-directed project. Pick something they were really interested in and really wanted to pursue and sustain it over six months. The other thing is that they weren't really good at presenting. And so we decided that we wanted to build backwards and make sure that when they were freshmen that they were building these skills along the way. All right, all, right. all hands, muster in for a second. So the fact that we have 330 kids and that we know each kid and that we have small class sizes, um, you know, the f we always ask, what's going on that made you behave this way? You know, I, I always know if I have a student who's acting out that there's a reason for it. And we take the time, the teachers take the time, the administrators take the time to figure out what's going on. Um, we have a full-time social worker, um, which is unlike most schools. Um, we actually, the district would have given us two days, but we've paid for the other days out of our site-based budget so that we have a full-time social worker. So some of our students who may not be the most academically inclined may actually be the ones who are really great in the lab or in the shop, um, so they have something to offer and share with their peers. And it allows our students to really feel positive about what they can contribute to, to their classes in a way that they might not in a traditional school setting where they don't get to splice line or, um, or haul seine nets or captain a vessel. I mean, our kids, learn, they all get their safe boaters license. They all had to learn how to operate. Um, they get the, their operator's licenses here. Many of our students go on to get their um, launch operator's license and work in some of the yacht clubs around here. And one student comes to mind who graduated by the skin of his teeth, like academically not so good. I had him for several years when I was his history teacher. And his senior year, he barely made it. But then he went on to be um, work on tugboats, and he worked when the BP oil spill happened. He was on a vessel that was helping contain the spill. He helped, um, he was on a vessel that was doing some of the dredging in um, the Hudson River and the PCB dredging um, up in the upper Hudson from the GE settlement um, in the PCB on the bottom of the Hudson River. So, and now he's actually an inspector of vessels that are coming in. So, like, that's a student who would have failed out of traditional high school and got a high school diploma and has gone on to being really successful in a career that he found because he was here. We actually have, a, I think, a higher percentage of students on plans than most schools um, because of our small class size, because of the high interest, the lots of hands-on. Um, shop and water time and, and hands-on science. Um, I think, you know, depending on the class, we're at 15 or more percent on IEPs and then probably an additional 15 percent on, on 504 plans. So it's about a total of 30 percent or a little bit more that are on either special, uh, either special ed or 504 students. And they fully access the curriculum. You know, we're taking kids who have been in self-contained classrooms because they're not trusted right. and we're putting them in our shops and they're going out on the water and they're doing science experiments and going out to the river and doing sampling and you know because our ninth graders they do they go out and do um, invertebrate labs and studies and things like that and you know there are kids that we make sure to send staff with right. um, but we make sure that we as the adults put the supports in place so that all of our students can access the curriculum um, 
we just graduated a student last year, um, Zoe, who had something called Tetra Amelia disease. I think that's what it's called. Um, she was born without limbs. And probably one of the most inspiring kids ever. And she fully accessed the curriculum. She didn't do our tech classes. I mean, she couldn't make a half hull model, but she took every science class we offered. She wants to, she's at Central now studying meteorology. She wants to be a weather person. Um, she did our sp small business class. She was really, I mean, so we made sure that she could access fully the curriculum. We have a lot of students who are on the spectrum um, and so the thing that's really cool about the school is, and you can see this when the kids are playing basketball, we have kids who have like all different levels of ability to interact. We have kids like super urban kids, we have suburban kids, we've got rural kids. We have kids who are, you know, I'll always say they're quirky even for sound school standards. Um, and our kids are so patient and kind with one another. It's amazing. We have a really strong student services team, which includes we have four special education teachers, two part-time tutors. One of ours left, and we really we had three. Um, so, because we have a before and after school homework center, we have a flex period during the school day. Um, we have push-in, uh, mostly push-in support for our students rather than pull out. Um, and a lot of our, our each of our teachers in student services works with a specific grade level for the most part. I mean, we have one teacher who works with all the freshmen, and so he knows the freshman curriculum really well. And, and actually, when I was teaching world history, we team taught a class because there were about 35% of the students were on plans of some kind. So, um, so that was great. And at Thanksgiving, we always like raise money for turkeys and food, and we always have these like competitions of which class can get the most cans. This year, the student council, which has been growing in its energy and it's been amazing to watch, they decided to do this fun run, which was totally student driven, which is very much about what the school is about and should be about. And it was their energy and the student voice and um, so the idea we've raised more food and more funds than we've ever raised before we had this great community building activity we had all these kids coming out to support each other you know it's just really a, a unique and special place and um, you know I forget that when I'm in the middle of everything and then I go watch the kids play basketball or I walk into a student-led conference or I you know watch one student helping another student in the resource room during um, study hall, which is, I, I, it's just, it's something really amazing, yeah. kids who never, ever would have met.